Okay, here's the deal, guys. Um, I want to go dirt bike riding, and it's getting a little bit cold being November, and the last couple times I've taken my trailer out, um, I woke up in the morning and my heater's no longer running and the battery's completely drained. So I went online to a solar calculator, nice little tool, I recommend you go take a look at it. Um, I'll leave a link to that website uh, in the description box below. But take a look at what your uh, draw is for the batteries that you have. Um, I was kind of surprised I put in all the details of my um, power usage and I was a little bit conservative but um, what came up with was is I in a, a heavy load case cold day running the lights that I'm drawing about 105 amps and this Genesis Supreme trailer I have uh, I got it with one battery in it and it's a 75 amp hour battery so um, you only get about 50 percent life out of those batteries before you start doing damage so I only have about 37 40 amps that I can draw so definitely I'm overtaxing that and I probably did um, damage that battery so there's two things you can do to solve this problem one is to get more power by upgrading your battery capacity there are several ways to do that and the second one is to reduce your draw on the battery and you do that by um, either using items less or changing out um, items in the trailer that draw the most power. All right, so uh, today we're gonna measure the amp draw on my battery. Um, the guy I bought this trailer from built this custom box uh, for the hold the battery. Um, one battery in it now, looks like it'll hold two though. Um, and I've gone ahead and unhooked my solar panel so that we don't get the um, input from that, the current from that. Um, and then I put this meteric meter on my uh, positive line of my um, battery cable so we can see what the amp draw is and as you can see this is just the trailer sitting uh, with nothing on um, um, but the power connected um, on the inside and it's drawing about 0.3 amps of power just running the co2 sensor and the inverter um, that stuff uh, and uh, there's a lot of ways to measure uh, amp draw. Um, you can do it with a regular multimeter by putting it in line, but you gotta be really careful because those have 10 amp limits. So I picked up this meteric meter, can do up to 400 amps. Um, right now I gotta set it on the 40 amp scale and it'll tell us uh, the draw. So again, nothing hooked up. The draw is 0.3 amps. Now we'll shut off all the power to the trailer. To do that, we, uh, just use the power disconnect. All right, now with the uh, disconnect shut off on the inside, so all power disconnected, you can see the parasitic draw goes down to 0.05 amps, so uh, quite a bit less with it disconnected. So it says my parasitic draw is somewhere about 0.2, maybe 0.25 amps. In this video, we're gonna go over the load side of extending battery life. Um, using that calculation tool I mentioned earlier, the number one draw on my battery is the furnace. And since my wife won't compromise on the heat or the duration of heat, we're going to leave that one alone for now. And we'll address the second largest draw on the batteries, which is the incandescent lights in this trailer. Uh, we're going to look at what our normal draw would be um, using the incandescent lights, and then we'll also look at a maximum draw. Um, so typically when we come in at night we'll keep these two main lights on in the trailer and then either the lights over the bedroom will be on at the same time or the lights at the end so we'll just use the lights over the bed as uh, the typical load case so this is what I'm gonna call uh, typical and we'll go check what the amp draw is with those lights on Okay, so this is our uh, normal load case with the incandescent bulbs, just a couple of lights on inside what we typically use, and uh, it's drawing about uh, 7, 7.8 amps, 7.7 .7 amps um, in the typical load case. Alright, now we're going to do the maximum load case. So we have the typical lights on, and now the maximum load case, we're just going to turn on all the incandescent light bulbs in the trailer. Actually, we're going to turn all the lights on. Um, I've already found out these lights under here are already LEDs, so they don't have much of an effect at all on the amp draw, but we'll turn them on just in case. Go into the bathroom. 
lights on in there. And then the final thing is we'll turn our outside lights on uh, too. This switch does one light out the back, putting out the back, and these two switches do the awning lights out here, light up underneath our awning. So now I've got all the lights in my trailer on, and we'll go take a look at what the amp draw is in that case. All right, so this is the maximum load case. This is with all the lights on the trailer inside and outside turned on. And you can see our current draw goes up to 16 amps. Uh, pretty big load for this battery. Okay, now that we've uh, looked at the current draw with the incandescent lights, I'm going to go ahead and uh, swap out my lights with these LED lights. Um, these are relatively inexpensive lights. Um, you can check them out on Amazon. I'll have the link below in the description box. Um, and we got two different types, type 921 and then I think what's 1141, something for the outside lights. But I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, so we're just going to swap those out and see what the current draw goes down to. So here's the LED lights I picked up. My trailer has two types of bulbs. This one is the type 1141. And this is the incandescent that I've removed, and here's the LED version of that that I got. I got these LEDs from uh, Yita Motor on Amazon.com. I got two 20 packs. The other style light that I have, mostly on the inside of mine, is this type 921. And this is um, the replacement LED for that 921. Um, so one thing you need to remember when you get LED lights that they are polarized um, so if you get them in the wrong way uh, they don't work so don't be alarmed if you put it in and it looks like this it's pretty easy you just pull it out flip it around and then it works um, the type 1141 replacements, those are, uh, you don't need to worry about because the socket gets it so where you can't reverse the polarization on those. So those are always, always work. Okay, so uh, now that we have all the lights replaced, incandescent lights replaced with the LED lights, we'll run our typical load case. If you remember, we ran these two lights and then we're going to add the light over the bed. And that's kind of a typical um, evening for us. So we'll go out and see what the... Uh, current draw is on that all right hopefully you guys can see this we've uh, replaced the incandescent bulbs with LED lights and in our normal load case here you can see we're at 0.7 with the incandescent bulbs we're at 7.7 .7, so we've got about a tenfold reduction in the normal load case that's pretty amazing all right so that was pretty surprising to see that drastic reduction in current uh, draw on it so now we'll see uh, what the full load case or the extreme load case looks like so we'll turn all the lights back on all right so now we have our maximum load case um, in this one uh, again with the incandescent bulbs we were at 16 amps total draw maximum load case and you can see now with everything on we've dropped that down to 2.3 Again, a significant reduction in power draw off my battery. All right, so again, huge reduction in power draw with these LED lights. Um, it really, really surprised me. Um, after having done this, I wish I would have done it a year ago when I first got the trailer. Um, it's a significant reduction, and I, I would say if you guys have any incandescent bulbs in your RV or your toy hauler, um, Take the time, get some LED lights, replace all your incandescent bulbs, and it'll really extend your battery life. I uh, hope you guys found this interesting and useful. If you did, don't forget to subscribe. Give me a like if you liked it. Leave a comment if you have any questions, and I'll get back to you. Take care and God bless.